Today is Walt Disney World's birthday. It's October 1st, 2024. Walt Disney World opened on October 1st, 1971 with this very park, the Magic Kingdom. And we're gonna celebrate by having lunch at one of the opening day restaurants that coincidentally just debuted a brand new menu. So we're gonna enjoy that, some of the atmosphere. I'm also gonna show you some secrets and like little hidden lesser known facts in old frontier land. Yeah, let's go. Today we are dining at Pecos Bill Tall Tale Inn and Cafe. And this restaurant is based all around a fictional character called Pecos Bill. And you can see him there right in the middle of the sign. See at the top it says 1878 Saloon. That ties into the backstory here. Now this used to be two different establishments that they kind of combined together. But Pecos Bill has been here since opening day, 1971. So let's enjoy it. Now this restaurant is based around the Pecos Bill character. It's got a Western theme. It's here in Frontierland. Pecos Bill is a character that first appeared in Disney cartoons back in the 1940s. And we're gonna try something off the newly revamped menu. And I'm also gonna show you a bunch of the cool details in here that I really don't see anyone ever talk about. Now they're out there in plain sight, but they still are kind of hidden because you really wouldn't notice them unless you're looking for them. There's a bunch of really famous and iconic Old West figures represented in here. We got Wild Bill Hickok. We got a lot of, a lot of cool stuff. Annie Oakley, I'm gonna show you it all. So let's try some food. And then I'll show you a bunch of cool stuff in here. Now there's indoor seats and outdoor seating. It's actually huge in here. Sometimes there's an ibis or a bird. Oh, one of the coolest things about this place is the theming is just, it's indoor, it's outdoor. It's so rich and so good. I know I'm not the only one who misses the condiment bar. Who remembers that? These used to be condiment bars where you could add on like onions and tomatoes and lettuce and cheese, if I remember correctly. It wasn't that long ago, but it also feels like a completely different world. Pecos Bill has undergone many changes, but the loss of the condiment bar is like pre-condiment bar, post-condiment bar world. Anyway, so let's try something off the new menu and then uh, I'm gonna show you around some cool details. First things first, let's try something off the new menu. So they have these kind of like make your own bowl type of a things. You choose your base, you choose your meat. Check this out. So we've got a big map here that kind of situates us in space and time, like where we're supposed to be on the trail with Pecos Bill. And we've got Texas here, Gulf of Mexico, the Santa Fe Trail, unorganized territory. So we kind of get an idea we're in the Wild West that Pecos Bill is out there, he's an adventurer, he's an explorer, where he is, what he's all about. There's the Pecos River right there. Now I've heard people say Pecos Bill, Pecos Bill, all different kinds of things, but knowing that he is named after the Pecos River, but the majority of the times I've heard it spoken in like educational videos and things like that that I've looked up, it's Pecos, so that's what we're going with today. So it's said that Pecos Bill fell in the Pecos River as a little baby and was raised by wolves, so that sets the scene for the wild and crazy guy he is. There's indoor seating, there's outdoor seating, there's a lot of different seating areas. It gets very crowded in here, it is very popular. So, I actually ran into some friends, so we're gonna sit with them and they're gonna try something too. So I got the tamale, I had to, and it is covered with the Coca-Cola braised beef. But I ran into friends here today, Promise and Travis. Yeah. And you guys are also celebrating Walt Disney World, it's their 53rd birthday. I cannot believe it. Any excuse to celebrate, we'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it. So what'd you guys get here? Great minds think alike. We got the cherry Coca-Cola braised beef on nachos. So very Ooh. similar to yours, but with the chips. I love it. All right, so we'll get to see like kind of how both taste. On the new menu, there are three different options. Well, there are actually several different options you can put together with your bowls. You choose your base, you choose your protein, you can choose some toppings and stuff like that. So I chose the tamale and it is like a full size tamale under there. Look at all that cheese. All right, so Travis has tried it. Promise, have you tried it yet? Yes. Do you like it? Yes, I don't even want to be sharing with Travis. It's so delicious. <laughs> it's kind of giving me brisket vibes, but Ooh. they don't call it brisket. They just call it braised beef. Huh. Um, but it's so, so delicious. I don't totally taste cherry Coca-Cola, but it has that sweet barbecue flavor that's really, really good, especially with a little Mexicali style twist. Ooh, I'm 
excited. Now I'm gonna try. So I wanna like get straight to it, but I need a bite with everything, right? It does look really, really softly braised. Like, and I love cherry coke, so you know. Let's get some beans, let's get some everything. Ooh, I got a little cheese there too. Mmm, it is really good. It does have like brisket taste. It does. Yeah. And you know what? So I didn't get the rice bowl, but mine still does come with the rice. Oh, I thought it was the rice. No, it's the tamale. But the tamale is like buried. That's the you way. You see that guy? <laughs> you know, rice is always a safe choice. Rice is delicious. I was very tempted to get the rice, and the rice here is famous. So you actually get rice with the tamale. So as we're digging in, we can definitely taste more of the cherry coke in here. The meat is so tender and soft. It's actually delicious. We'll get a little bit of rice. I haven't even gotten to the tamale yet. Time to get into the tamale. Let's, it doesn't come in like a leaf as it should, but that's okay. Lovely sweet corn. Mmm, peppers inside. All right, it's, it's a winner. It says it's green chili cheese tamale, and there are like little green chilies in it. The meat and the tamale both have a little tiny bit of kick to them. It's actually really nice texture, really, like you can taste the graininess of it, the sweet corn flavor. The texture's just right, it's good. Mmm, the yeah, beans. Every, yeah, the beans are the really good too. Because you just get queso. You get a little bit of everything in this. Yeah. This is the ticket. And it's a good value, right? I think so. Like, you could easily share these. This is such a good value. I've been chowing down and there's so much left easily shareable. I really like the mixture of flavors. There's like cool and hot, a little bit of heat, a little bit of spice, a lot of savory, some nice cheese too. This is definitely a winner, that's tamale bowl, oh yeah. Okay, I'd say the new menu is definitely a winner. That was delicious and I really enjoyed eating it. And this is definitely gonna put Pecos Bill like up there in my sights again. And now I'm gonna take you around and show you some of the cool details and theming and story here. Since this is an opening day restaurant and it was created by Imagineers with such a cool story that's kind of like buried now, but it's still there, so we are gonna, we're gonna check it out. Now this place is chock full of theming. It is so cool. When you come in through this door, there's the Pecos Bill Code of the West. Respect the land, defend the defenseless, and don't ever spit in front of women and children. All right, fair enough. And then over here, it's like a long manifesto here, wow. Now, the framework of the story is laid out here. This is really hard to read and it's really long. So take a breath with me and listen as I recount the tale before we start looking at all of the different gifts from Pecos Bill's famous Western friends. And we're gonna read this. Considered by many as the meanest, toughest, roughest cowboy of them all, Pecos Bill has been credited for inventing all things Western, from rodeos to cowboy dancing to spurs, hats, and lassos. He can draw faster, shoot straighter, and ride a horse harder than any man alive. Unfortunately, we don't know when and where he was born, just that he was raised by coyotes and his name comes from the river in Texas. Over the years, Pecos Bill, along with his trusty horse Widowmaker, have made quite a name for themselves, forging new trails and taming others. Legend tells us several tall tales, like the time Pecos Bill jumped on a powerful twister and rode it like a bucking bronco. Then there was the time when Pecos Bill dug out a path to create the Rio Grande River during a severe drought that hit his beloved Texas. And then there was the day Pecos Bill was so bored and he took his handy six shooter and shot out all the stars in the sky except for one. And that's why they call Texas the Lone Star State. In 1878, with the encouragement of his friends, Pecos Bill decided to open his own watering hole, a restaurant whose motto very much reflects its one of a kind owner. The tastiest eats and treats this side of the Rio Grande. Pecos Bill called it the Tall Tale Inn and Cafe, and it quickly became a popular hangout for some of his legendary friends. As time went by, it became a tradition. When each friend paid a visit, they would leave something behind for Pecos Bill to remember them by. As you can see from the articles and artifacts that dawn the walls, many of which carry inscriptions, Pecos Bill had some mighty impressive friends. Seems every trail eventually led to the Tall Tale Inn and Cafe. Okay, so now that we've got the story established, let's take a look at some of the gifts that Pecos Bill's famous Western friends have left around for him and just more pieces of the story. Here at the main entrance, closer to where Country Bear Jamboree or the new Country Bear Musical Jamboree lets out, we've got this hearth with several ropes here like lassos, a cowboy hat, and a portrait of Pecos Bill and Widowmaker. 
set the scene and let us know. And even here, for the fire equipment, they have this old school fire hose and truck sign. Super cool. Up here we've got some boots. And if you look very closely, you can see the signature on them says Buffalo Bill with a portrait there too. That is so cool. I love this room personally. Even though it's a little chaotic, it's just so cool. It's got this like faux second floor and really cool lighting. These are the kind of stairs that I always like dream of going up one day. Like, let me just sit up there one day, chill and watch the crowd. <laughs> They've even got a sign here referencing the old condiment bar. Oh, here's another gift for Pecos Bill from Annie Oakley. These are playing cards with bullet holes in them and a revolver. So it says right here, and look at how cool that is. Over here from Jim Bowie, we've got playing cards and a knife. There are some decorations that don't have any signs next to them and I couldn't find any info about, so I think they're just to set the scene that this is like a rootin' tootin' gambling Wild West place. Unless there's a story to some of these. Here's a giant hammer and iron nails from John Henry. That is so cool. Some horseshoes up here framing this archway. That's cool. Everything looks kind of like adobe, bricks, old fashioned materials. All right, let's see what else we can find. I'm kind of going room by room. And this is Pecos Bill's love interest, Slewfoot Sue. And what's cool too is right around the corner, you can see these gloves that are hers. And they're signed and they say, to Billy, all my love, Slewfoot Sue. And that is so pretty. And it's like these little details that you would just not even notice. This room is jam packed with them. We have Johnny Appleseed's yes. pot. That's so cool. So this one, the little plaque is like, I don't know, it doesn't say it, but obviously this is the Lone Ranger's mask and a silver bullet, a lone bullet there. Now, do you know why there's no name on there? No. Because nobody knew who the Lone Ranger was. That is so clever. Okay. He wore the mask so nobody could identify him. The ironic part is, it's so recognizable, it's so iconic, but it's still anonymous. So this one says George Russell and Casey Jones. So again, it's like these handwritten stories up here that you can't even see, but it's so cool that they have. And then right here, Kit Carson navigation equipment. So like all of this was sourced and brought in. What's the map here? We have Washington, Oregon, Idaho. Super cool. This room is a treasure trove. All right, back here, we have Old Betsy, Davy Crockett's first rifle. Oh, cool. And then, Davy Crockett. You can't like not think of the song when you see these. His iconic cab there, bag, and like a cowboy hat, and a horn. Cool. There's also this cool black and white portrait of Pecos Bill's horse, Widowmaker, and it looks like a black and white cartoon. You can see like the fuzz behind it. That's awesome. And he was just in on all the hijinks. Anything Pecos Bill could come up with, Widowmaker was like, yep, let's do it. Let's go. Now it says there are also some playing cards from Wild Bill Hickok. This one doesn't have a sign or anything next to it, so these might be them because the other cards are all attached or assigned to someone else. Now, I don't know how I missed this, but it's right as you're about to go into the dining area. Paul Bunyan's Axe. And look, it's got an inscription on it. It says, two Pecos from one giant to another, best wishes, Paul Bunyan. It's almost so big that you walk under it, like you walk under this to go into the dining area and you can so easily miss it. But that is so great. That is so wonderful. How fun. Now connected on the other side of Pecos Bill is more seating area, but this is pirate and nautical themed. We got like pirate stuff over here. Cause this is kind of connected. That looks so cool. It's like cowboys and pirates. <laughs> and this room is called the Jack Sparrow Room. And it's full of sea faring treasures.
So it used to be Tortuga's Tavern, and now it's Tortuga's Treasures because it's a temporary gift shop for Pirates of the Caribbean while they're working on construction over there. But it's like all connected. There's dining areas and seating areas and stuff. Treasures. Cool. So there's tons of pirate treasures in here too, and maps and art. And here we are. Now, while I was on that little scavenger hunt of sorts, I met a cast member who was so lovely and she was into it with me. And she started coming around with me looking for all the stuff. And we also got to look at some of the other rooms, like the Jack Sparrow room. Every room has a name. And this outside dining is called the Prairie. And I just think that's so cute and so cool. It was so fun looking for all those things. So if you or someone in your family really likes the Old West and really likes those old characters and stories and stuff like that, and also likes kind of scavenger hunts and looking for stuff, this is a very fun activity. And you can write down the list from this video and hopefully it helps you. And some of the things are kind of hard to see because there's people at tables around them. So I did have to kind of like wait for people to move or kind of try to look like above them and stuff like that. So it's, it's integrated into the restaurant, but very cool. Now it is starting to look gray out there. Oh my goodness, look at this. Half gray, half blue. How funny. It was so much fun in there finding everything. <laughs> look up here, there's a porch with like a rocking chair or like chair and table, a bottle on the chair. Let's see if I can try to see what's in there. A lantern. That's so cool. It looks like there's a hidden Mickey up there too. Can you see it? We're back outside and I just love the theming here and how everything blends seamlessly. It's several different facades, but they're all one building. And over here on the side it says, legendary food for legendary folk. And then we've got the Gold Road stage line, Prairie Outpost and Supply. And of course this leads into the Country Bear Musical Jamboree and all the other wonderful things here in Frontierland. We've got Tiana's Bayou Adventure right over here. And that is part of like new frontier land, I'd say. Because there's also more coming, as we know, with Cars Land. Things are gonna definitely change and expand. Ooh, I just heard some thunder. Of course, still in order to ride this, this is such a new ride, you still need a virtual queue or a lightning lane. But I really love it, it's beautiful. Hello train! The Walt Disney World Railroad! Which I also love. <laughs> oh. oh wow. This is just beautiful. It's just really fun to watch people hurtling down the drop too. It's like a pastime. Looks like there's some boats with guests and some empty, but I also heard thunder, so there we go. Oh man, fun. So it's all sort of connected here, and like around the corner is the other side of Pecos Bill. There's another entrance. There's actually several different entrances you can get in by. Let's go look at this one. So we've got the outpost over here, and then another entrance. You can see it says Pecos Bill Tall Tale Inn and Cafe, and just more awesome theming. And everything is like all of the detail in this is super cool old west style it's awesome this is definitely old school disney imagineering and theming and then the way it leads into tortuga which is like right next door it's all kind of the same building and connected but separated so we're kind of seamlessly going from cowboys to pirates and here we are in connected. We got to look inside of there. These dining rooms are sometimes open, sometimes not. Fun! Ooh, did you hear that thunder? Did you hear it, Mickey? I think he heard it. And this, one of my favorite little alcoves, it's kind of in the back of all of that. Fun! Now once the new Pirates of the Caribbean lounge opens, we don't know what's gonna happen to Tortuga here. Hopefully they'll keep using it for something because it's such a cool space and the pirate theming is awesome. So I just like to kind of see it and document it. 
when I can, because while well, it's still here, it's thundering outside. And over here, instead of Pecos Bill's rules of the West, we have the code of conduct. Every man has equal title to fresh provisions, if any has the gold. A little bit more everyone for themselves type of rules. All right, it's almost time for Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party to start, so that means it's time for us to get out of here. No visit to Magic Kingdom on any day is complete without saying hello to Cinderella Castle, but especially on Magic Kingdom's birthday. Happy birthday, you beautiful. Ooh, that was serendipitous. This beautiful castle has had many colors and changes, but it has stood there representing Magic Kingdom for all these years. This is the first day of October, but it does still feel like summer. Tonight is a Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party night, so the guests are flooding in. We are flooding out. And I am sorry to report to you that even though it is October 1st, it still feels like summer. There's like no difference yet. Oh, I just saw lightning. Maybe it'll storm. I hope not for the party goers tonight. It's definitely looking crowded. I love the way Main Street USA looks decorated for fall. It is so pretty. If we can't get the weather, at least we can get the Mickey pumpkins, you know? Oh, it just did a big thunder. Oh boy. I hope that I can get out of here before it gets too crazy. Really quick before we leave, is this the first piece of holiday merchandise for 2024 out in the parks? Well, the thing is it could be Halloween or Christmas, so it's hard to say, but maybe it's Sandy Claus. Well, today was so much fun and a fun and like different way to celebrate Walt Disney World's birthday. I try to be here whenever I can on October 1st when I'm in town to just celebrate. You know, every year it's Disney World's birthday. I do wish they did a little something more. I know they did a big celebration for the 50th recently, but I think they should do a little something every year. It's once a year, it's their birthday. But hey, at least we can come out and celebrate. And I thought I'd do something a little different today by not only trying some new food, but also looking at some cool, like hidden lesser known details, some story elements, some imagineering elements. Everything has a story when it's created. And I really love that old school imagineering concept where like there are story details everywhere. You are immersed in the story in ways that are sometimes subconscious. You may not even notice all of the things around you, but you know where you are. You're set in a place and time and it's just beautifully done. And I don't know if Pecos Bill is like long for this world to be honest because they're changing so much with the story and with New Frontierland and stuff. So we'll see what happens to it. And it's just such an old story and cartoon with a lot of weird stuff in it. And I don't know, we'll see what happens, but either way, at least now I've done a video I've wanted to do for a long time of showing all those cool things. So I hope you enjoyed it. Happy birthday, Disney World. Let me know some of your favorite Disney World memories and hidden details too to celebrate the birthday with me. I'm sending you all a ton of love. I'll see you for the next video. And until then, as always, stay safe.